A resource library is a fabulous way to grow your email list and over deliver on value for your customers, clients, and subscribers. Today, I'm going to teach you how to create a resource library on Show It 5 using two different methods. A pop-up method where they have to enter their email address for every download or how to create a resource library where there's only one opt-in and they can access all the downloads without having to continually enter their email address. You'll see this is a resource library template that I sell in my Show It 5 template shop, and it really is a great way to do a couple things. First, you can use a resource library to help you build affiliate revenue in your business. You'll see here in the template, we kind of are going with this uh, kind of brand story of somebody who maybe blogs about food or recipes. And so her resource library is all about uh, freebies for a joyful kitchen. You'll see the kind of brand story continues and this is what I'm talking about building affiliate income. When you are a business owner, you probably are going to start getting a lot of questions. Where do you get your favorite tools for what you do? Um, you know, what are your staples or what are your go-tos and favorite resources? And if, when you start to get these questions, you'll find that you're going to really give the same answers over and over again. And so for me, that I love to use a resource library to point people to my favorite tools and resources. And if you are an affiliate partner of your favorite tools and resources, you can earn a little bit of extra money. So a resource library page is a great place to organize the different tools that you may have and again, help you out to earn a little bit of extra money as an affiliate marketer. The resource library is also great for growing your email list. And you'll see this on different resource library pages where they have different downloads you can access. If you're looking at my template, you'll see if you click the download button that a different opt-in appears for every offering. Now, the reason that you might do it this way as opposed to, say, having a single opt-in to access all of the downloads is if you are creating different sales funnels or sequences for your freebies. For example, say you have uh, four different courses and you're trying to funnel your subscribers to offer those courses. And you have four different opt-ins that work individually for leading that customer through the journey to pitching at the end. That might be a very specific reason why you would choose to have different opt-in forms for each download. The other reason why you might want to do that is say you want to tag your subscriber with specific interests. I know some people love to get really uh, deep into tagging in their email marketing strategy and doing it this way as opposed to allowing everyone to just freely download their uh, resources allows you to get specific in your email marketing provider, say like ConvertKit or MailChimp to tag them with what they are interested in or where they came from onto your list. But there might be a reason why you don't wanna do that. And that is because it is kind of, for lack of a better way of explaining it, annoying for your customer to have to, to enter their email address over and over and over for your downloads. And if you are more, uh, you know, on the fence of not funneling to a bunch of different products and services, and you really only have one thing that you are promoting in your business, you might not need to do it this way. You might be able to just to create one opt-in form, say like my custom client, Andrea Lane, she owns the Creative Spring and she is an amazing business consultant and system strategist and she wanted to go a different route. Instead of having every single download that she offers uh, attached to another opt-in form, she wanted to create one entrance opt-in form and send her subscribers to her library after the fact to where they could just freely and easily download the PDF resources that she has as opposed to having to opt in every single time they want to get one. Um, so this is another way that you can do that. 
it's just a different method. It really depends on your business model and what you are trying to do with your resource library. If you are only funneling them to one specific thing in your business or you know you really are just trying to grow your email list, you're not necessarily doing a bunch of sales sequences and different tags and all the things, this is a great and easy way for your customer to get into your resource library and get what they need without having to enter their information in over and over and over again. Now, other creators of resource libraries might talk about why you should password protect your resource library. But unfortunately, in Show It, there is not a way to password protect the pages that you are designing. So in the back end of Show It, as you know, uh, there really isn't a spot where you can say, hey, I want to password protect this page. So what do you do? Do you use a WordPress plugin like other people suggest, or should you just create it and show it? For me, I have chosen to create my resource libraries right in Show It and sort of forego the password. And this is because I personally think it's just as easy to share a link to a resource library as it is to share a link and a password. The reason why you have a password is to just add an extra layer of security so that way everyone in the internet can't access your free resources without opting in. And like I said, it's really not that hard to share your password with someone. If somebody is going to cheat the system and, and share your information without uh, letting another person opt in, they're going to they're gonna share the password just as easily as they're gonna share the link, right? But there is a way that you can protect yourself on the back end of Show It to make sure that if you do build it the way, say, Andrea did, that, that random people won't find your resource library page on the internet. And that is, if you come over here, if you are toggled on the actual page portion of your, uh, dashboard and show it as opposed to say this is a canvas if you see where the menu is now highlighted in blue so now we're focused on the canvas and you can see the canvas settings here or say if you were on a certain element within the canvas now you'll see the element uh, options here what i want you to do is make sure you're toggled to the actual page and the page name itself on the left is highlighted in blue what you'll do is in advanced settings on the right hand side, you'll scroll down and make sure that this ask Google to ignore this page is clicked. By doing so, you are you are telling Google do not pull this page up in search engines. So no matter what information you put on this, somebody's not going to be able to find it when they are searching for something specific that pertains to what you do on Google. So that's an easy way that you can protect the page and make sure that nobody can access this without opting in first. And in Andrea's case, you'll see in her navigation, there's no way that they could actually access that page unless they have a link. And in order to get the link for her, you have to opt in on this free resources page that we're on right now. And once you opt in, Andrea sends her subscriber an email welcoming them to her email list, as well as saying, hey, here's the link that you asked for to the resource library, and it immediately gives them access to this, which is her resource library. If you scroll down, you'll see, as opposed to the template that I have currently available where each download is a pop-up, for her, if you click download, what happens is the PDF itself opens in a new tab and that way her subscriber can download all of her resources without having to re-opt in. For that, for her, it works. It works for her customer. It creates a really easy experience for them and they like it. They like not having to re-opt in every time. And since she only is really pushing her services and her business and not selling a bunch of different products and offerings, it works for her to, to have it this way. So if you are like Andrea and having a resource library page that is separate from your website, or not really separate, but more like hidden from your website, and you don't need a bunch of different opt-in forms, I'm gonna show you how you can link up your free downloads using your WordPress Media Gallery. 
Once you design your page, you can use something like my template that you see here, as opposed to making these pop up with opt-ins. You could choose to set this up just like Andrea does, where they just click the download link and the download appears for easy access. Um, you could do it that way, or you could still use the opt-in. It really is up to you. Let's look at the back end of Show It for the resource library template. And I'm going to show you how to link your free downloads, say if you are wanting to do it like Andrea does. So right now on the template, you'll see that the way this works is it is showing the pop-up canvas, which is hidden below here. So say we don't want to do the pop-in, say we want to link a uh, download for immediate access. I'm going to remove this click action and what we're going to do is we're going to go to URL. We're going to go to link type URL and this is where we are going to input information in order for your customer to access the download. So to do that, what you're going to do is log into your WordPress dashboard. When you log into your WordPress dashboard, this is what you will see uh, on the left hand side is really where you navigate in WordPress. And if you come down to media and you go to library, you'll see all the images that you've ever uploaded into your WordPress library. Now, this is what these are all the images that are really in your blog posts across your entire website. But there's something that you can also do, which is upload documents that don't have to necessarily show up on, say, a blog post or a page in your website. They can just live in your media library, and that's what we are going to do today. So you're going to come up here next to media library, click add new. You can drag and drop your files right here or select this button and choose a document to upload. So I am going to let's go here. Let's go to the client experience checklist. So this is a download that I have and say I wanted to share this on my resource library. I can click it and open it and it's going to upload into my WordPress media gallery. Now, if I were to insert this PDF as a file on say a blog post or a page of my website, it would slow down my website. So I would not suggest that you do that, but just by simply linking to where this is hosted on WordPress will not actually slow your website down. So don't worry about that. In order to get the URL that we need to send your customer to, you just click on the document that you uploaded and what we are looking for is the URL right here. So I'm gonna double click and copy that URL and show it where you just did link URL. You're going to paste the WordPress media URL you just copied. And I usually suggest that you click open in a new window so that way your resource library or website or whatever you are working on continues to stay open in a tab on your user's browser. So let's look at how this works. I am previewing a the WordPress template that I just edited, or not WordPress, show it template, excuse me. Let's click download, and now you'll see that the PDF, the client experience checklist I have created, opened up in a new tab, and they can download this immediately without having to re-opt in. That's how you connect documents to your Show It 5 resource library if you are choosing to have a library just like Andrea where they opt in first. Okay, remember that no change is live in your website on Show It 5 unless you hit publish. So every time you make a change, you want to make sure you come up to the right hand side and hit this blue publish button. That way those changes that you just made can go live. One more important thing to talk about is figuring out what resources your audience loves most. It's really important that you actually know which of these resources your audience likes, right? You don't want to continue wasting time creating resources for free that people don't actually download. So I want to make sure today that you are also equipped to know, okay, how do I figure out what resources people like? the most. 
And one way you can do that is by downloading my free guide that I have available to you. It's the fast and free way to figure out if your website converts. And basically what it's going to do is show you through heat mapping right here on your web page live which resources your audience are downloading, which ones they are clicking on the most to access. And by having that knowledge, you're going to be able to create more resources either that touch on that topic or solve a similar need as opposed to just continuing to create free stuff for free stuff sake that people aren't actually downloading. So if you want to go grab that free guide today to figure out how to set up heat mapping and use it on your website to make sure your website pages are converting, head to convert.meganmartin.net and get it for free today. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you to figure out how to create a resource library for Show It 5. And if you have any questions, just pop them in the comments below. I can't wait to see your resource library using Show It 5. Thanks for tuning in.